Hello, my name is Brittany D. I am a psychic medium and spiritual teacher. My divine purpose is to assist in the expansion of the collective consciousness and to help you become more connected with the divine. This is a space to remember all that you truly are and ignite the possibilities of your highest potential. Hello, hello, and welcome back for another episode of the Addicted Household Recovery. Thank you guys for joining me. In this episode, we're going to be talking about what are you mad at God about? You guys got to understand that this illness, this addiction and codependency and seeking to fill a void outside of ourselves This is a spiritual illness. This is a disconnection from self, disconnection from God. So what are you mad about God? What are you mad at God about? What do you feel like is unfair? What do you feel like this isn't meant to be the divine plan? This isn't the way that it's supposed to be. Because that's what's keeping you ill. That's what's keeping you disconnected from your higher power. And that's why this is a spiritual illness. That's why you have to surrender the part of you that keeps yourself disconnected in order to no longer be sick, in order to no longer be ill, in in order to no longer feel like you need to continue to fill that void and that anger and resentment with anything outside of you. So you got to really ask yourself, what are you mad at God about? Because it will be a direct reflection of what you are still in denial and ill over. When your past traumas or what you just cannot accept, you cannot figure out how to accept that this is the truth that this is your story, that this is what you experienced. It'll keep you at bay from God. It'll keep you in denial of what the truth is. And as long as you stay mad at God, you're choosing to stay ill. So for example, with my mom and my brother, it seems to me, right? It's not my my job to fix, control, manage their experience or their healing or their trauma. But it seems to me as someone growing up within the home and in the family that they were mad at God that they took that, that, that God took my father pissed, angry, resentful. And it kept them sick. It kept them angry. It kept them resentful. It kept them in in denial of the truth that he was gone He was no longer here. And until that could really and truly be accepted and integrated, coming to a place of neutrality and being able to be at peace with the fact that he was no longer here, that anger and that resentment was being projected everywhere, including all over me. Same thing with me. I could not accept that my mom and my brother were this way, that I wasn't meant to be connected to them in a deep way that I really and truly desired. I'm still in the process of accepting that if we're going to be real guys. But I'm recognizing that it's keeping me sick. It's keeping me unhealed. And it's blocking my connection from my higher power. Which if you really know me, that's all I honestly give a shit about in this life. I love my daughter. She's like a very, very close second. (laughs) But I know that in order to really and truly show up for her in the way that she really and truly deserves, God has to come first. And I was so mad at him him, her, whatever you want to call it. 
so mad. How dare you put me in a family where they will never see me, where they will never connect with me in the way that I deserve to be connected with, the way I deserve to be treated. How dare you? Why is this the plan? Why is this my life? This is not fair. And until I could surrender my idea of what my life was supposed to look like, my idea of what my upbringing was supposed to look like, my idea of what my relationship with my mom and my brother was supposed to look like, until I really and truly could surrender that. And I'm surrendering deeper and deeper every single day. I was sick. I was so sick. And that's why if you go listen to my episode about the night I got sober, I started putting the pieces together because I didn't feel like I was letting go of ganja. I didn't feel like I was letting go of a life of numbing. I I genuinely felt like I was letting go of my brother. Because to me, siblings are supposed to look a certain way. Or at least that was my previous view. That was my suffering. Is that if you're my sibling, then you're supposed to show up for me in this way. You're supposed to have my back in this way. It's supposed to be me and you against the parents whenever shit's going down. Not always everyone against me. And I had to give up that story of being a victim to God's plan in order to begin to step in the light of what the truth was. And maybe one day, The actual truth is actually maybe way more incredible than what I thought it was supposed to look like. Usually that's how God works. But I had to surrender my story. I had to surrender what I thought this was supposed to look like. Or otherwise, I was going to stay in a state of perpetual suffering. Rejecting God, rejecting God's plan not accepting resistance 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 suffering 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 breaking down breaking down i'm a victim to your plan i'm a victim to your plan and it's really challenging to look at and witness others who expect you to be a certain way or expect you to show up in a certain way And you're trying to be your most genuine, authentic self and be in alignment with God's plan. And they're telling you that you're, you were supposed to show up in a different way. This isn't the way it's supposed to be. Your truth triggers me. Your truth hurts me. It's not supposed to be this way. It's supposed to be this way. When you're just being genuine, you're just being the absolute most authentic self that you can be in this now moment. And that hurts people that you love because it mirrors and reflects where they are still mad at God and where they are still not accepting what God's plan actually is. There are multiple relationships in my life where I have literally, in order to heal this, God's trying to help me heal this, literally become the living embodiment of some of my closest people in my life's triggers. And I'm sure you can empathize. I'm sure that you've experienced it as well. That's what being a divine mirror is on both ends. And until everyone drinks their medicine and surrenders to the truth, and surrenders to God's plan, and not what they say this is supposed to look like, everyone stays in a cycle of suffering until you unhook yourself. 
and say, I surrender to you, Spirit. I trust your plan. And I may not know it all, and I may not be doing it perfectly, but I know that I'm not broken. I know that I'm not unhealed because I'm not doing it perfectly. I was never meant to do it perfectly. You as you are, are perfect, divine. You are God's child. And I promise that God's plan for you is way better, way better than your plan for you. But can you surrender to it? Can you accept that how you deem that this is meant to be or supposed to work out or how it should have been? Can you let that go and say, God, I want what you want for me. I'm getting out of the way. It's not easy work because these your, your ego and these unconscious energies, they want to stay alive. Denial is a beast. Go check out that episode. Denial is a beast. Denying what your experience is will immediately reflect in your relationships and you will deny and dismiss what others' experiences are. Being the living embodiment of God's truth and God's plan is not normal in this world. You stand out, you're different, you're selfish. <laughs> we, can go, we can go in a whole episode about that. Being in your sovereignty, being in the truth of your light, in your full embodiment of your unique divine blueprint it's selfish in this world. That's what they'll call you. And it'll feel selfish to anyone and everyone that is still denying God's plan, that is still denying God's love, that is still denying God's connection, that is still mad at God. And I'm not saying to shame yourself for being mad at God. Be with those feelings, be present with those feelings. You're a human. You can be pissed the fuck off. That's a very natural, organic human emotion. But just know that you're fighting a battle that is a losing battle. You will fight it for the rest of your life. You are not stronger than the highest power that creates worlds. And your inability to forgive God for your life being different or your plan being different than what you thought it was will continue to reflect and reflect and reflect in your life until you finally get down on your knees and say, okay, your plan trumps mine. Got it. Heard. And it'll get bigger and it'll get, because what resists persists. Your resistance and your denial of what your, what your, what the truth is will get so big and in your face that you can't run from it. God will corner you because that love is forever infinitely flowing to and through you. You cannot escape God's love. You cannot escape life force energy. You are it. So you're really ultimately mad at yourself. You're mad at yourself for not being some type of way that you think you're supposed to be. Probably society or somebody in your life told you. And that is why I will continue through this entire podcast series to reiterate over and over again, you are always healed, whole, and holy. Whoever told you that you were broken or that you needed to be fixed, they were broken. And there's nothing wrong with feeling broken. 
once again, very natural, organic human experience. But when you surrender to the truth, and the truth is, there is nothing about you that needs to be fixed. There is nothing about you that is broken. You are always healed, whole, and holy. God's life force energy is always pulling, pouring through and to you fully. God's love and abundance and wealth and fulfillment is always pouring to and through you. But the human experience, the mind is the matrix. And the human experience, these sensations that we feel, they're very real. And they tell us that we wanted this to be a certain way. I wanted to be connected with my mom and my brother. I wanted to be a part of what they were doing. I wanted to be a part of their business. I wanted to be a part of a part of a part of a part of why was I always out here, God? Why was I always the black sheep and on my own doing everything alone? Why was I never met? Why was I never seen? And until you can forgive God and forgive yourself for wanting something other than God's plan, you will perpetuate the suffering. Your denial of the truth will exist in you. And you will unconsciously, not even meaning to, deny others' experiences and dismiss dismiss their feelings. Because you're dismissing your own. You're not seeing yourself. You're not seeing your own truth. You're not leaning into your truth. And you're not allowing God's plan and God's love and God's grace to pour through you and into every part of your life. And I hope if anything, you hearing this today, you remember not only once again that you were always healed whole and holy, but that you deserve God's wealth and abundance and fulfillment and all of the incredible things that he has planned for you. When you give up your story, when you give up your plan and surrender yourself to the truth of what is. Once again, not easy work. But this is where miracles exist. This is where God can come in and heal everything and change your life. But if you keep staying mad at God and saying this should have been a different way, you will perpetuate the suffering. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed that episode. Please subscribe, leave a review. And if this was impactful for you at all, please share it with others. This is how we can help each other. Much love and namaste. Namaste.